Howdy, folks. Welcome to Retsu Talk, episode 37, Slow Beef. How's it going? It's not too bad, you know. I could go on and on about an hour if you wanted to. A little monologue, or if that's okay. No? All right. No, no, because as we've been wanting to do lately, we have a guest, and today's guest is... Yahtzee! Hello, I'm Yahtzee Croshaw. Sorry, I... Thought I, was hey. supposed to, thought I was supposed to pick up the end of the sentence there. It's going to be an issue with the, the uh, delay, I think. No, I, I brought some props with me, actually. I was going to... I suggested a little bit. If I rolled dice before I said his name, would that be wacky enough? But then I realized I don't have any dice, but I do have two AAA batteries that sound like dice. You are the, the radio DJ color commenter with the soundboard I have always hoped for. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry, I've ruined everything. No, that's okay. It was It was a terrible fucking bit to begin with, so... Well, yeah. How are you? I'm good. It's a lovely sunny morning here in uh, Brisbane, Australia, and uh, I got my work done for the morning so far, and I'm ready to waste an hour on you, gents. Thank you so much for doing that. Your work I, you mentioned was is... eating raisin toast? Yes, I had to quickly eat some raisin toast when you called, because mm-hmm. that, as part of my morning routine... Keeps me regular, you know. And you want, you want to be energetic and, and regular, I suppose, yes. for, for the Retsu Talk podcast. It's so important to be regular on a podcast. Well. I can tell you, it, it, it is overcast and cold as shit here in, uh, in New York City. Oh. From doing this. How unfortunate for you. <laughs> and the sun's sitting here in Alabama. Oh, God. I don't understand why so many people like the South. Your friend Jim Sterling likes the South, too, right? Yeah, it's, it's one of the many th- mysteries about Jim, that he loves living in Mississippi. This uh, very <laughs> cynical English friend of mine. I heard he lives in Mississippi, but he loves it? Well, he wouldn't live there if he didn't love it, I presume. Well, there can be the whole, I can't get out of here thing, which is acceptable. No, Jim is an, Jim is an enigma. Yeah, there could be a whole case of being trapped in Mississippi like some people are, but I, I, I'm assuming he I is there by choice. Well, he, he is married there, so maybe he's trapped to an extent. Mm. Yeah, I know what that's Ball like. and chain, huh? Mm-hmm. Don't do it! Um, so, Yahtzee, it says here you're an escapist? Yes, I do the Zero Punctuation video game review series for the theescapistmagazine.com. Oh, so you don't get out of boxes or other small spaces for the entertainment of others? No, that's an escapologist. Oh. oh, right. See, I thought the escapologist was the one who studied. Okay, I understand now. Gotcha. Let me let me ask you this about Jim Sterling while we're on the subject. Yes, let's make I, this I, whole I, podcast about Jim Sterling. <laughs> and Total Biscuit, if we could. Everyone but you, specifically. Yeah. Is his last name Silver? <laughs> so, what? In the, uh, escape... Yeah, I don't get that one either. Oh, yeah, Sterling Silver. Sterling, so I, I see, yes, I understood. As you said it, though. I'm so, I'm I'm so glad you brought your A game, Diabetes. I always edit uh, out people not getting my jokes. Okay. Um, I also edit in a laugh track. So there is this uh, escapist expo recently in uh, Northern Carolina. Yes. Um, and during the Q and A, somebody mentioned that uh, doing a podcast, you and Sterling, and you had mentioned not being there, not being able to act off each other, things like that. Yeah, I mean. Obviously, I'm not uh, planning for this to be massive A-game material either, but I always find <laughs> if you're trying to get a good chemistry going, the delay that comes from Skyping over over the Pacific is kind of too tricky to work with. I mean, case in point, the my introduction at the start of this podcast, for example. I was going to say, if this went well, then you had no excuse, but <laughs> it's very, very plainly not going to go well, so don't worry. <laughs> We've proven your point mm. as I choke. All right, but forget is, forget the Escapist Expo for now. Uh, I I have I have a big question important. Is Silent Hill Two still your favorite video game? Um, well, it's up there. I mean, I've got a lot of favorites these days. There's always something that comes along and surprises you every now and again. What are your top five, and can you tell it to us without breathing for about five minutes? <sighs> I I would need a script. You got your ten minutes when I write something up. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Okay. I'm not actually going to write something up. I, I would not expect you to. Uh, yes, Silent Hill 2 is still one of my favorites, uh, favorite uh, horror games, because it, it does atmosphere so well. And mm-hmm. that's what a lot of uh, horror games seem to forget about, especially these days, when it's all about you know the dead space, jumping out from cupboards, and uh, right. making you spill your coffee sort of approach to horror. Right. No, I, I understand. and I mean, it's all like pop scare thing. Um, but like, why do you think maybe 
Konami was never able to even come close to replicating that again. And I would even so go so far as to say bastardizing the whole series. That's a good word. Thank you. I don't know. It's <laughs> I got a high five. Okay. It's it's um you know, it's a lightning in a bottle thing. I think I actually rate Silent Hill 4 pretty highly as well. There mm-hmm. was this weird thing going on with the Silent Hill games where it seems like there was a different team with every single one. But Silent Hill 4 had a lot mm-hmm. of guys in common with Silent Hill 2, and it's got one of the most interesting stories, I think, partly because it doesn't take place in Silent Hill for, for the most part. And I think where Silent Hill goes wrong is when it's always trying to, you know, be fan servicey, appeal to uh, the what people have gotten used to about Silent Hill rather than trying to really be uh, fresh and exciting with the format. Right. Which is why I was, you know, tentatively optimistic about Silent Hill Shattered Memories. Until, you know, actually playing the bloody thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, I know exactly what you mean, unfortunately. I, uh, you know, I liked The Room a lot. Um, or at least I liked what they were going for. Yeah, I like, I love the story aspect. It's just they made some really obnoxious gameplay decisions and I have no idea why. I mean, I did love the escort mission that comprised the entire second half of the game. That was easily my favorite part. Yeah, well, the second half of the game, which was basically just the first half of the game in reverse. Right, yeah. That was that was my that was a great decision on Konami's part. Beatus, you ever play any of these Silent Hill games that we're talking about? I have not. Aren't they some kind of stealth King of the Hill sort of competitive game? <laughs> That's ex- yes. But- Actually, it's it's Tom Clancy's Silent Hill. If you've never heard the term before, R.I.P. Well, I might as well now. <laughs> What's he gonna do? Sue them? <laughs> not anymore. Haunt them? <laughs> Whoa. Huh? R.I.P. You know, Tom Clancy himself probably has as much involvement in Silent Hill as he has done in most of the games that come from Tom Clancy. <laughs> I think, yeah, there was probably a point at his desk when he wasn't even looking at the things he was signing. Just sort of Ubisoft put the contract under the pen, just like, yeah, fine, whatever. Yeah, there's money in it. Just just keep it rolling in and I'll keep signing my name. Uh, that's an attitude I can sympathize with. Yeah, Absolutely. That's basically all I do now, except no one really asks me to sign anything, but I imagine, if they did, you know. Uh, the, the slow beef brand, not a big marketing draw these days? Not not these days. This is why, once I got Total Biscuit, I'm like, I have to hit up every person who is more powerful in video game humor than I am. I can see Hence. why you get along with Total Biscuit, because both of you are an adjective and a food. Oh, shit. Mm. Whoa. That's... That's why I get it. You'll beat us. Hang up. <laughs> I'm gonna go talk to someone ironically named after a disease. <laughs> no, just just pick a couple. Go with uh, I don't know, uh, timely walnut. <laughs> well, like I'm gonna I'm gonna have your name changed to that on essay right now. Okay, that's let me quote. Speaking of essay, you you work there now, but you, you I, don't... I've lived there for quite a while. Yes, I was around. I mean, partly why I wanted to do this podcast is I was around right at the beginning of the Let's Play on Something Awful. I, I did a Let's Play a flashback before there even was a Let's Play subforum, if you'll recall. I do recall. That, was, that would have been back in 07, wouldn't it? Uh, yeah, actually. Um, it's when the forum came about, I think. Yeah, yeah 07 is when like we had all the bunch of the screenshot Let's Plays. And I think, for the most part, that's it was all screenshots and hybrids until video came along and then mm. Games Forum got just flooded with, yeah. you know... Masterpieces. Yeah, when you introduced the video thing and ruined everyone's lives forever. You know, someone IM'd me once with like, you've revolutionized Let's Play, and that same person a week later is like, you fucking ruined the whole thing. Thanks for nothing. <laughs> I don't think... I swear that's true. Yes. I mean, you are basically to blame for PewDiePie. <sighs> I, you take the good with the bad, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> that's the best thing, too. You're not really beholden to YouTube, so you can say whatever you like about YouTube Let's Play. Well, actually, if you want to rationalize your way out of it, who did the first face cam thing? Who was the pioneer of that? Good question. I don't think it was PewDiePie, but what I understand is he sort of pioneered the combination of that and subtitling his own words. You know, right. like, because if you... Some of his videos will do a thing, even though you can understand him, where he, I guess, just underscores it so that whoever's watching and clapping their hands in their crib, you know, can follow along just in case. If you didn't believe this was wacky, look at this text, man! <laughs> exactly. And it's a wacky font, too. I'll give him that. No, um... Sold. <laughs> so, what do you think of the state of Let's Plays nowadays? R.I.P. 
Oh, sorry. Well, I still, I'm still a big lurker on the uh, Something Awful Let's Play forum, as I have been mm -hmm. all the time at that. Not posting much, because people tend to be weird when I do. You mean because of the whole, like, like yeah. you're, like, fan yeah. Yeah. and... Yeah. 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 Yes. Is there is there a point, I guess, in, like, that sort of... I, I hate using the term internet celebrity, because it sounds like it has a smarmy connotation to it, but, like, is there a point in that sort of fame, I suppose, where you can't go back to doing the old things you used to? I guess. In general, or? I guess. I mean, I used to post on something awful for a while after I started doing zero punctuation, but there's this weird thing that, that comes up in those sort of situations where, especially on the internet, because you're, you, you came from the same stock as all the people you're posting with, they get, they seem to have this sense of ownership over you. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I think I do, yeah. They're like, uh, Yahtzee is ours. He came from our stable. Uh, and and uh, if he does anything for anyone else, he's selling out or something. I understand. What's good about my situation is I'm a moderator, so I can just ban people who do that at whim, you know? So let's play the state thereof. Yes. Um, yes. N uh, not just on something awful, but I think in general. Well, do you think, um, how do you feel about the whole YouTube Let's Play scene in general? I used to pretty much stay away from YouTube constantly. Because 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 the whole thing where there's no, you know, editorializing like there isn't something awful, where it's less of a discussion between several posters and more just one person uh, trying to create some kind of wacky persona so it'll make them stand out. But uh it's been getting somewhat better. There's a few okay. there's a few I got a few subscriptions now that I wouldn't have had before. I, I Really? Did, yes, I mean uh, Men's Health? Well, Reds of Prey, of course, I subscribe to. Oh. Yay! Uh, super great, super great friend. I like him. Yeah, he's good. Haven't you interviewed him as well? Uh, we he, we have him on the agenda. Oh, um, right. I bumped I bumped him for you. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> <laughs> so fuck you, Super. No, I'm, so, I'm sorry, Super long. Great Friend. I like your videos. <laughs> super mediocre friend. No, it was that. If you want to know the truth, it was actually more the time zone thing because it was just like if we have to schedule like a certain day, let's just try to get that done, kind of thing, you know. Mm. Obviously, we have we have nothing but time, you know. I mean, I can integrate interview super great friend tomorrow. This isn't really an interview. I can podcast with him tomorrow. I mean, who the hell cares, you know? But, yeah. I mean, it's 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 technically the future where you are. I mean, black is white, up is down. I don't even know anymore. It's Thursday already. It's and um, I. I don't know how I get my head around it. I, I, I wouldn't know either. But uh, Super Great Friend's pretty great. I like him. Yeah. Of course, he, uh, I first became aware of him from the Something Awful Let's Play he did of uh, Deadly Premonition. Mm -hmm. We own him, by the way. Oh, yes, of course. Because Something Awful owns everyone who posts there. It's, it's part of the uh, contract you sign when you, when you start an account. Yeah, it's, it's in the fine print under the $10 you spend. That's why I betrayed them. It ain't just for posting, friend. Ironically, though, low tax is not owned by something awful. I don't really understand how that works, but... Yeah, because actually when I first started zero punctuation on YouTube, low tax again, got in touch and said, would you like to do some, this, this for something awful? So, and, and, and I'd actually been like contacted by the escapist at the same time. I see. Uh, so, I, so I said, uh, can I hear both offers and get back to you? But he basically said, I'll go with them, we probably can't compete. So I did. That was nice of him, at least, you know, to be kind of like, fly free. Yeah. You know, do whatever you like, you know. Yeah. He's actually, it's, it's weird, he's a, I mean, I, I've talked with him a couple of times. He's a, he's a nice guy when you get to know him. I think a lot of people think he's kind of a jerk with the whole, mm. like, uh, revenue system that he's got going on an internet forum, but, you know. Well, it, whatever works. Is he listening? I mean, I, I don't think you can shame people for making a living on the internet. If you are, it's just... Probably just jealousy. Mm hmm Sour grapes and all that. Yeah. I hear you. Well, I mean, we'd all do it if we could. You know, it's a, it's a funny thing. It sort of came up because we interviewed uh, uh, another, like, well, a, uh, more like a YouTube Let's Player who does it for a living, this guy, Northern Lion. Oh, I was just, I was just listening to that this morning, actually, for, in preparation. He was a good guy, and, and he was talking about some of the stuff he has to do to sort of, you know, stay relevant, compete, let's say, with other YouTube Let's Players. Mm. And I, I guess that's the notion is, is there some sort of, is there some sort of thing where if, if you're doing this as your job, you could do something that you would consider, and this doesn't really apply to you, but sort of, let's say, let's call it unsavory. In a way, like um, your Halliburton moment, right? Like uh, you know, gaming gaming the search results by asking your viewers for likes, or mm, yeah, doing a day one LP even though you know it's not very good, or that you have like no interest in the game but it is popular. Therefore, you know, 
I mean, it, you're you're not kind of in that position, so you're entirely the wrong person to ask. But um, because you're on, you're sort of on the escapist. You're 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 your own deal. We go looking for you, basically. Yeah, I, I got uh, yeah. I got a contract. Mm-hmm. So you're above all that, I guess. Mm, yes. Mm. You look down on these YouTube people and laugh at them, basically for, be, for being sw- swarthy people. In the land down under, you soar over oh. those peasants, huh? In the podcast, are you like eight for eight today? It's <laughs> awesome. No, I mean, I mean, I don't think you know. I'm one to judge. People always uh, complain to me about the adverts in my videos, but that's just you know how how I'm able to make a living from it. So I think the trouble thing about making money on the internet is that there's so little precedent to it. It's such a new sphere of making money. So where where people find ways to do it, you know, good luck to them. You know, that remi- that reminds me of another question. If you when you come in contact with people who are not, let's say, internet savvy or for lack of a better term, nerdy. I, what what do you tell them you do for a living? Yeah, how do you attract the grandma audience to escape this? I, u- I usually just say I'm a writer. I s- <laughs> just well, leave it at that. Yeah, well, having written some novels, I can kind of use that. Oh, yeah, that's right. Really? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Can I, pl- can I plug my books? Please, absolutely. All right. Everyone's read The Da Vinci Code, but okay. <laughs> I've written two books published through Dark Horse Books. The first one, uh, Mog World, was a sort of video game spoof on MMORPGs and the oh, yeah. characters and attitudes therein. And the second one was called Jam. It was an alternative post-apocalyptic story. Oh, okay. So let me let me ask you this: You got Mog World, which was sort of based off of like a video game spoof. Yeah. You you've made your own video games. Yeah. Zero punctuation. Yeah. Made with like quotation marks, maybe. No, don't worry. We'll get back to that. <laughs> um, and uh, and uh, uh, and you do zero punctuation, which is video game review stuff. Yes. Um, what have you accomplished in your life that has nothing to do with video games? Um, I got a rock- I thought so. I got a rocking beard. Oh, okay. Well, all right. There is that. You, I've I've heard you have eschewed the hats recently. Uh, well, not recently. I haven't worn it in years. I mean, I keep it. On the zero punctuation avatar, because that's the icon people associate with it. But I guess right. you know, I just was sick of being noticed. I hear you. I, I think it's part of the development one goes through in your twenties. You start your twenties wanting to be noticed, and you end them wanting to blend into the crowd. I, I kind of, I think I know what you're talking about. Did you actually get like noticed on the street and such? Sometimes, yeah. The hat certainly helped that. I mean, sometimes I get recognised when when people hear my voice. And every now and again, people recognize the face. More often lately, because I've done like more stuff with my actual face on display. But the hat, I yeah, see. the hat did uh, did uh, uh, remove a lot of the uncertainty. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I I don't know if you've ever heard of a web comic called Dominic Deegan. I know, I know of it. Yes, I I saw the author last night at a Nine Inch Nails concert. Serious. <laughs> I I I'm like, where do I know that guy from? And I'm like, and I was, with and my then you were like, he's Trent Reznor. And I said to my wife, like, I, <laughs> I know that guy. And then I'm like, and I think, oh, God, it's that guy who makes Dominic Deegan. And I'm like, never mind, I don't know him. So we just moved on. But um, <laughs> I, I, well, I, I didn't know what to say to him. Like, hey, your webcomic, I made fun of it on the Something Awful Forum once and, and a podcast. <laughs> you know. Well, that so, would break the ice. <laughs> I think it, I mean, it would have, honestly. So you're here for Nine Inch Nails, too? Huh? That, by, by the way, just a quick aside, that was my wife's wedding anniversary present to me. She completely surprised me with it last night. She's like, we're going somewhere, make sure, you know, and then we ended up there. Good concert. That When your wife takes you to a Nine Inch Nails concert, that's when you know it's love. Absolutely, oh. yeah. If if only, I wish I wish every person listening to this podcast could find that in their lives. Mm. See there, that's, that's our negative image gone. Bang. Two birds, one Thank stone. You. Good work. Absolutely. Time to hang up our hats. I have a lot of, uh, you know, encounters with fans. There's been more recently uh, from doing the Escapist Expo and stuff. And it tends, and always tends to be awkward because I'm very tightly scripted in a lot of the stuff I put online. So in, And in person, I can be a bit socially withdrawn. Okay. You may be surprised to hear. So usually when I meet... Actually, everything you've been saying in this podcast has been scripted. Yes, it has been. <laughs> I even put the pause in the stage directions before what you just said just now. <laughs> I love what we're talking about. I'm a little awkward, you know, so to run. And then there's this huge pause once the joke collides. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, anyway. Yeah. So usually conversation with fans go along the lines of, hey, I love your work. Thanks. And that's kind of where it dies. <laughs> well, I mean, what, what, 
what else can you really say at that point? You know what I mean? Well, what, like, what, I, 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 what I tend to say to people is, you know, uh, ask me something about video games, because I know quite a bit about video games, and that might give you something to talk about. Mm-hmm. Or, hey, that's Jim Sterling. They turn around and you're gone by the time they look back. <laughs> <laughs> um... <laughs> When you, have you met? Do you meet any like creepy fans? Do you have to like do anything to sort of do oh, that? Oh yes, I, I have my sh- I have my share of the creepies. Like there was there was one time in uh, in a bar where someone asked to shake my hand, so I shook his hand and he said, "I just wanted to touch you." Yeah, <laughs> yeah and I, I, remember, I remember saying at the time, a "Little bit creepy, mate." And then he, and then he said, "No, it's all right. I just wanted to touch someone who touched Gabe Newell." <laughs> That's even worse, though, isn't it? I know. <laughs> I, 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 I can't decide. <laughs> I mean, it's got to be worse for you personally, in a way, but then sort of relieving, but then sort of worse again. Yeah, that about sums <laughs> it up. I don't. I mean, we've only ever met people who know of us at PAX. Yeah, you know. So, I mean, I don't think we've ever met anybody like creepy. Fortunately, you know. But occasionally, underwear gets thrown at us. You know. Right, yeah. And I don't know if this is creepy, but I am rubbing my face on, on the screen on your Skype icon there. Oh, yeah. well, I, I I did get a sort of strange vibe. <laughs> that's what new, that's the New Jersey in me. It'll do that to you. I'm Instagramming the Skype chat right now. <laughs> um, what was I going to say? Speaking of, speaking of making games, mm-hmm. which we were not absolutely speaking of, but, you know, just Just enough. edit it, it'll work. Exactly, yeah. We'll have, we'll have some, like, thing, like, you know, Frankenstein together from your sound clips to just sort of make it sound like a good segue. Yes. Slow Beef, you are my best friend. <laughs> oh, God, I want to play that on a loop. Um, oh. you start, so you start with, uh, you had these games like the Adventures of Arthur Yahtzee you made when you were in, like, high school or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, in, in Visual Basic. Mm-hmm. And then, and then you do a self-insertion game uh, called the Chizo Mythos. Uh, not so don't much. lie to me. I, don't lie to me. Tr- Tril- Trilby's totally you. I know. Actually, that that character came before I I was wearing the Trilby. That's partly why someone bought me a Trilby. Oh, so it. Oh, okay. So now it's more like the, it's like the dark half where the character is escaping and becoming you. I guess. Yeah, no. yeah. About sums it up. I am a. I am a. I am a burglar. This is my confession. Okay, cool. You're not right behind me. No, you're not. Okay. Uh, and th- and now you've you've gone on. You you did twelve the twelve thirteen series. Um, yes. And by the way, as a programmer, can I say that is incredibly impressive to have made a stealth platformer out of an adventure game. Uh, well, it was engine. just because it was the only engine I knew how to use, and I didn't want to learn a new one at the time. Oh, well, forget it then. They used to totally suck. <laughs> no, I, I, thank you for your uh, praise. No, no it's, 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 that's really impressive. Um, and now you, you've gone on, and now you've made this game called Poacher. Yes, that's. Uh, when I actually moved into Game Maker, generally. Okay. And I know it's got a bad reputation, partly thanks to, like, all the, the, the videos, low-tax riffs on of those terrible games he plays that are pretty much all made with Game Maker. But if you just want to make, you know, simple 2D stuff, I think it's, uh, it's, uh, you could do a lot worse. Well, I think Hotline Miami was made in uh, Game Maker, I think actually, it was. Right? Also, uh, Gunpoint. And also, Skyrim. <laughs> um... Say and there, uh, yeah. I'm. I think Hotline Miami too is also a game maker as well. Like, it's yeah. it's kind of interesting nowadays because it seems like the barrier for entry for video game creation is a lot lower than it used to be. Well, that's uh, why it's such a great time to be making indie games at the moment. Not just Absolutely. that they're easy to make, but they're also easy to get out there on stuff like Steam and the uh, uh, iOS store and all of that. And if you want to get people to say they just want to touch you, that's how you do it. <laughs> yeah, you make video games. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. Make like a an, maybe an iPhone app with just you know your body on it, so they can touch you conveniently wherever <laughs> they are, happen to be. <laughs> is uh is poacher free by the way? Yes, it's free. Uh, I haven't tried to. S- are you poaching money from your fans? I haven't really made much effort to sell games. I think I'm going to try that with my next game that I'm miss that I'm uh, putting some finishing touches to at the moment. But I'm always kind of nervous about charging money for something because if you give something away for free, you've always got that. If they hate it, you can always just say, hey, it was worth the price of admission, right? <laughs> Get what you paid for. Yeah. <laughs> so that's so, and in some ways, I guess you are kind of a coward in that way. Basically. No, yeah. I'm kidding. Well, I, but, do, uh, okay. I, am, I do get, you know, always struck down with terror moments before releasing something new. I, um, 
I tend to uh, start doing something new and then quit about 10% in I think until that, I yeah. get really invested. That's the vast majority of my projects. Yeah. Except, except the ones I do complete are usually um, I get really excited about and then nobody really cares, so you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah, I that's, hear that. It's terrible. It's but... just getting past the hump, really. That's what... Uh, or just don't try. That's what separates the men from the boys in game development. Vetus, what do you do in terms of game development? I test things. Okay. Or I shoot... No, actually, I just shoot down ideas that you have. That's true. I actually... I've had a few ideas that he's like, no, that's stupid. That's a useful um, uh, person to have around. Actually, that's the way we do Retsu Prey, is I'll come up with some idea, and then he's like, no, that's stupid, no, that's stupid, no, that's... Okay, that one's all right. And then the ones that are all right kind of tend to go there. Well, yeah. I mean, it's important to get another perspective, isn't it? I guess so. I just don't know why it has to the perspective of someone who's never done anything with game development or knows very little about games in general. Well, the moment you decide you know best and you don't need anyone else's opinion is when you turn into George Lucas. There you go. This is... I'll, I'm just going to... I'm going to tell you my game idea right okay. now because I'm never going to make it. Okay. Sure. I, I actually did a panel along these lines at the Escapist Expo. Why didn't I go? I know. What's wrong with you? It's in North Carolina, so it was at least a four-hour drive. I could have made that, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. I had, I had to fly 25 hours. See, I, um, wow. Uh, what did, wait, actually, let me, let me just jump on that for a second here. What did you bring for a 25 hour flight? Uh, my incredible ability to sleep on flights. Oh. About 40 hats. I, I brought, uh, when I, I took a four, I had a 14 hour flight and I brought my Nintendo DS mm. and a copy, and a copy of, um, Good People Die. Or, no, wait, what is it? Virtue's Last Reward. Oh, yes. Good People Die? That was the original Japanese title, which I thought was a lot better than Virtue's Last Reward, but it turns out Virtue's Last Reward still kind of works for whatever reason. Makes you think. I think so. You're right. Good people do die. I never realized that. <laughs> I think it was... And only the good ones die young. I think it was supposed to be this time around, like they're saying, like in this sort of death game that they're playing, because there's a bit of a Saw type of element to it. Yeah, it's like, yeah. this, this time around we're killing characters you like. You know, or whatever. But um, I don't know if you've ever played either Nine 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 or Virtue's Last Reward, no, no, or no. even if uh, didn't didn't you do a video showing one of those games once? I yeah, we we did our Retsu Prey of Virtue's Last Reward, right. which um, it's it's a weird they're they're both weird sort of games because people who like Japanese visual novels tend to call them visual novels, but people who like adventure games like mm. me like try to say like no, it's just an adventure game with obnoxiously long cutscenes. <laughs> More or less. Yeah, I've never been a never been a fan of the whole visual novel concept. It's a real prisoner's dilemma. <laughs> See, that was. Is that, am I using that right? Yeah, no, no you're right. It okay. was they use they do prisoner's dilemma. I'm, in that I'm just game. old fashioned enough to want a bit more gameplay in my games. I understand. Well, that's. I mean, that's a, a weird thing though, too, because I'm assuming you're pretty big into adventure games. I was more in the past than I am now. I must say. But I grew up on like the LucasArts adventure games, like your Monkey Island and your Day of the Tentacle. So for a while, I didn't play much. Oh, yeah. I didn't play much else. But uh, when I, as I got older, started playing stuff like Half Life, I started to realize that what really interested me was when gameplay and story works together. Story's not just this uh, this uh, set in stone thing that the gameplay just, you know, basically just adds pauses in the story and that little. And not much else. Or I was going to say, yeah, or like when the story is like just a bunch of rest stops on the game highway. Yeah, yeah. I worked, I, I worked forever on that metaphor. It's good. Um, thank you. Do you have any ideas? Do you have any like games that really like you think marry the two concepts very well? Well, I, I, uh, I, I did just mention Half Life, which I think does it pretty well because uh, you are because you're constantly in control and all the story is told in background details all around you, which which is impressive. Hmm. Do you know? Actually, I've n never played the original Half Life. Never. Never. I'm not sure how well it holds up. I mean, it did have mm -hmm. uh, like innovation going for it, and like a lot of games that have innovation going for it, they don't age terribly well. So you're saying Half Life doesn't have a very good Half Life? Ah ha ha ha! Hmm. I, I, I would say oh, you know, if you haven't played it, maybe try Black Mesa Source. Oh, oh yeah, I remember that. Which is the the remake of Half Life in Half Life Two graphics, actually. Like, because uh, they improved a lot of they improved the game in a lot of ways. They made it uh, make a lot more physical sense in amongst other things. I uh I played uh Half-Life 2. Yeah. And I mean I I didn't think it lived up to the hype. I didn't play it right when it came out was maybe the problem. Mm. And I felt like a lot of the story was you just run into a character who is like, "Oh my gosh, Gordon Freeman." Well, anyway, we want to go down there. 
You know, and that was kind of repeat, you know, for a while. I did think it was a bit weird that they tried to have this whole character focus in Half-Life 2 when uh, Gordon Freeman has no character whatsoever. Yeah, he's just a scientist, right? And then yeah, he, in who, Half-Life 2... It's... He never speaks and uh, kind of screws the pooch in the first game and all these aliens invade. And then suddenly in Half-Life 2, he's the bloody messiah. Yeah, and then he's like gunning down aliens like he's the Punisher or something. But I'm like, how did you learn how to do any of that? Well, they knew they had a meme on their hands, so they had to take advantage of it. Yes. Well, he's the son of God. That's why he can do it. Oh, I see. Okay. I miss. I, I didn't finish it, so I missed the religious subtext. Yeah it's, all, it's, yeah, it's all in the subtext. It's all in the background details. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not good at any of that stuff. I, I usually just like it when the games explode nice. That that can be. That's good. That can be good. I mean, I named Just Cause two game of game of the year. Why Just Cause? <laughs> I. That's another one I still have yet to play. That's pretty fun. Got to got to check that one out. Does that marry story and gameplay well? It marries uh, gameplay and explosions well. Oh, okay. In that case, then I'm fine with that. (laughs) You you know, um, I noticed, though, lately you seem like you... or I shouldn't say lately, because I'm not sure on the time frame, but you've been... I was going to say let's playing adventure games, but you seem to have this this thing going where other people play it, and you watch them play and drink a beer and just sort of talk over that. Oh, well, half the time. Half the time, it's uh, something I've playing and sometimes it, the other half time it's uh, my co-commentator Gabriel playing the game so it, it is, so it is uh, you know sort of back and forth let's playing basically we just my friend Gabriel and I are the same age and we grew up with the same games so all we've been doing is taking games that only we remember in any way fondly or not fondly playing through the whole thing and just you know reminiscing over them yeah i watched um manhunt i watched manhunter oh yes uh and and, um, what was the other one? Normality. Yes. Or I should say, I watched part of Normality that someone called out to me where you had a trouble, you had trouble saying the phrase booby booby <laughs> bum bum. I was very, <laughs> I was very tired. <laughs> and when you see that in the script, it's a hard thing to pronounce. <laughs> uh, you'll, you'll notice this is a thing of the two of us when we interview someone. I'm the one who does research and shit. Right. So. I, I, I kind of, in my research, I say, I mean, I watch like an hour of something before we're set to talk. And then I'm the also there. Yeah, yeah. more or less. Um, but, no, yeah, you had, you had trouble. I, it was just the funniest thing in the world to yeah, say, peop- booby, people, booby, bum, bum. People just uh, seem to love it when something goes wrong. And in this case, we've been doing this video for like... <laughs> They're going to love this podcast. We've been doing this video for like three hours, and we were both very tired. We'd had like one coffee at the start of it, and... Uh, we're having trouble keeping the energy going, and then uh, I think we were talking about you know songs by uh, the Black Eyed Peas, and uh, mm-hmm. and Gabriel said that you know my hums might as well have just been called booby booby bum bum, and then I just corpsed for like twenty minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to you have to take it in the context of the rest of the video. I'm sure the rest of it we were on absolutely sparkling form. All right, but uh, but for that part of the video, I'll just cut it, and, with, and we've got instant red supreme material basically. Uh, yeah, there you go. Go nuts! <laughs> I can't. It's like an hour, it's like an hour long, and that and that by that point we're just fresh out, honestly. Yeah, I mean, I messed around with uh, like doing like splitting up into like fifteen minute videos and twenty minute videos, and then like hour long videos, and every time every single thing I do, someone would complain about saying, "Oh, the, now the videos are too long." I was like, "Oh, oh we want to see the whole thing in one take." Well, that's I think that's kind of the issue with any sort of uh, media creative thing with. Yeah, with instant feedback especially, though, yeah. is that, you know, everyone's got that equal voice, so there's always someone like... I've been doing a thing now where I read, like, creepypasta stories. Yeah, I've seen And people that. are like, yeah, it's terrible, I mean, it's, but it's it's the low-hanging fruit. No, but uh, uh, people, um, you know, some people are like, I like it better when there's people laughing. And I'm like, no, I like it when he's alone, and, and, and then everyone fights, and I don't know what to do. I think I'm at the point where I just don't read comments at all. I still do. I just don't know why. It just it doesn't help. I mean, what you have to like realize is that the people who comment are always going to be in a vast minority to the total viewers on the video. Mm-hmm. So by nature, they represent a minority view. Mm-hmm. Right. What they're supposed to do is give you a snapshot as to how people are reacting to what you're putting out. And it's really the only place you can get that. Well, a lot of things work in theory. True. So you are a communist, I take it. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Tell me. All right. Let's just let's just switch tax for a bit here, because I just I looked at my agenda again, and one thing jumped out for no good reason. 
Do you like it when le people let's play like the Chizoma Mythos, twelve thirteen, etc.? Um, I would be lying if I said I hadn't watched a few let's plays of my games. Well, I had. I have to imagine you must have. Well, I mean... it's it's an interesting perspective to take. Actually, uh, with a lot of my game development more recently, I've gotten into the habit of getting focus testing done, which is where you just have someone play the game mm -hmm. and watch them, and you're not allowed to tell them anything. Right. So. Uh, Let's Play works as a sort of impromptu focus test, I suppose. Having said that, I have seen quite a few of the YouTube Let's Plays of the Chizou Mythos and Poacher where they do the, that really annoying thing where they read aloud all the written dialogue yeah. that appears on the screen. That's their script. Yeah. Have you seen any Scarecam LPs of your games? <laughs> I, I wonder if there are. There have to be. I'll be right back. I <laughs> Google? I'm sure, I'm sure I wouldn't want to know. <laughs> we've been we've been doing our best to try to to try to tell people. By the way, that's really fucking annoying. But nothing seems to work anymore. I think what it is with me is that when you're just like flatly reading out the dialogue, is that there's no there's no discussion or criticism of the game, and that's what I like about Let's Play. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's just filler. I mean, speaking as a like a games journalist, one of the reasons I keep watching Let's Plays and that attracts me to it is that it's a uh, it's it's a unique form of media games because the player has about as much involvement in the creation of the experience as the creators. And so it's entirely valid for the player then to offer their own DVD commentary on the experience. But uh, the player has absolutely no vested interest in making the game look good or towing some kind of party line. So you get this really interesting sort of blow-by-blow -blow critical commentary on video games. Yeah, definitely. And that's what interests me about it. Yeah, I, and I think that's I think that's when it works best, honestly. You know, because you know, and I've described it again as just a podcast with a video game in the background, and people just sort of ramble on about nothing. Or, or you can tell when they when I, I call it like they went, they run out of gas. Yeah. You know, where it's just like now I'm just reading or just reading yeah. aloud or, or, or humming along with the with the music. Oh, or the worst is when they like start actually telling you the controls that they're doing. Yeah. You know, like okay, I'm jumping. Now I'm throwing a hammer, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. Or spend 20 minutes in a room because they can't find a missile pickup. <laughs> oh. oh, oh. Uh, but yeah. this is really boring to watch, right, guys? Oh. <laughs> you know, I'm sorry, not all of us can be, you know, Mario Galaxy 2 experts or whatever the hell. Damn right. <laughs> Have you ever considered revisiting Flashback as a video let's play? Well, actually, funny you should mention that. I was experimenting, I, I got a, like, a game capture device recently, so I was experimenting with a live record of the Flashback remake that was on XBLA quite recently. Oh yeah, that's right. I heard that was terrible. It's pretty, it's pretty bad. Uh, it's, it does a lot to try and uh, hit the same points as the original, but adds a lot of embellishment, like works a lot of it into a larger narrative, and they turn the main character into an absolute douchebag, I think is the main mistake they make. <laughs> He, I mean, he unironically uses the word awesome source at one point. Oh. It's just sad. That's some, that's something like a, a, let's, a bad Let's Player would do, I think. Mm. Awesome sauce. Jesus. Actually, I do wonder about the game, because one of the uh, random lines that the main character says when you uh, regenerate his shield is, let's play. So I wonder if they've got Ooh. some kind of awareness, or they're trying to, you know... Because a lot of developers are aware of Let's Play now, aren't they? They try to use it as a as a marketing thing, right? And yeah, it's it's uh, well, that's that's always the part that fascinates me the most is I wonder what game developers really think of their own uh, their own games being Let's Played. Yeah, I mean it's cool when they're okay with it. I'm not so cool with it when they sort of deliberately get someone to Let's Play it because that's like I said, mm -hmm. that's less about the criticism and that's more about a marketing exercise, right? Well, and it seems like that's sort of happening because I know some of the um, the higher end uh, let's players. I'll call them higher end because they they are the most popular or whatever. They tend to get like review copies of the games first. Yeah. They tend to get you know under embargo, granted, but and I, I wonder. I have to wonder too if there is some some notion or some contract going on of you're not allowed to talk about X, Y, or Z. That, you know? that would be problematic. Right. But that's the thing, but Let's Players aren't journalists, so they're technically not under any obligation to have any sort of, you know, integrity, I suppose. Well, I don't think it, I don't think it matters if you're a journalist or not. If, they've, if there's any kind of contract signed, then they've got you by the balls. Yeah, really. 
That's yeah. But that's the thing though. I'm the problem is that I'm not anything, so I have no idea like how how that goes with people. But I have to imagine that cer- like cer- some people are like, no, I'm only going to take a review copy if I'm allowed to say whatever I want to say about it. You know? Yeah. I mean, I I tend not to get review copies. Do you not? Do you not ask for them? No, because you know. <laughs> Just in case, you could probably get them if you wanted. Well, though, we, you know, we tried early on to get like games across from the US, but it just took too long, really. Oh. So what I do now is I just buy a game when it comes out here and then play it. And I find that works better for me because what I do is more about is, is less about a review. That is to say, explain to someone why they should buy this on launch, and more about discussing something that people have already had a chance to play. Oh, okay, that's interesting. That's how I tend to think of it. I have to imagine, because even we've seen this, is that um, doing reviews or discussions about games probably gets you a lot of hate mail, because if there's one thing people can't stand, it's when you talk bad about a video game they like. Well, there's not there's not so much of it to my face. As I said, I, have, I don't read the comments much for, for pretty much those reasons. But I th- also think there's sort of, with me in particular, there seems to be some expectation that I'm going to like rip the piss out of it. Uh, oh, that's a good. Yeah, and that's sure. a, that's. I've seen a lot of people comfort themselves that way, where they say it's all right. You know, he he just takes the piss out of everything, you know, regardless right. of what, regardless of whether he likes it or not. Which isn't true, because if I do like a game, I will definitely say so. When you do put praise on a game, do people not like that? They're like, where's the cynicism, man? <laughs> well, every time I do it, and I've done it like many times, there's always someone saying, "Oh my God, he was nice about a game." For the 1,200th time. <laughs> you know, I, I got some weird feedback, because uh, recently I did a, a Let's Play of uh, Contra 3 for this guy Dectalon. He has a hard games thread on something awful. Oh, yeah. And yeah, and, I, and that was one of my favorite games growing up, so, and someone said, like, oh, my God, I don't believe Slow Beef actually likes video games. Because <laughs> I sound like... I sound like a very cynical old man because I feel like, oh, nothing's good anymore. It's all, you know. But I do, I like video games. Yeah, just... I mean, p- people say, you know, I'm the guy who hates all video games, but I wouldn't do this job if I hated all video games. It does make sense. It's kind of a weird job if you, if you did hate all video games. Yeah. Beatus, do you like video games? No. I've never played one, actually. Oh, okay. Oh, well, then... No, I love I, I love video games. I'm really inter- I'm really interested in the the culture of video games and um, and the creation of them from a like artistic cultural perspective. You've seen uh, indie game the movie, I take it. I haven't actually. Oh, neither have I. I've seen half of it. It was on Netflix, but then I fell asleep. Which it's a good watch. I tend I tend not to watch films so much these days because of all the video games I have to play. <laughs> <laughs> well, video games are like films, man. It's true though. I uh, I was reading your I am Yahtzee on. Uh, you had a Reddit oh, yes. thread, yes. apparently? Yes, my, hips, my hipster housemate talked me into it. <laughs> and people could just ask you anything. And one of the things you had mentioned was, um, or somebody asked you something about, if you have a job, like if your actual job is playing video games, do you tend to like them less? Yeah. Is the question. Or do you ever, you, you do, like you wake up one day and you're just like, uh, the last thing I fucking want to do right now is play blah, blah, blah. Well, sometimes there is a, a you know, a feeling of resignation having to play every new game that comes out. But I, I think I said at the time, you know, having that attitude just makes the games that are good stand out all the more, you know? Every every year there's a few games that remind me why I do this, you know? Like uh, mm-hmm. Spec Ops The Line was one of those. I, I started, I keep hearing how great that is. It's like, because um, they make you have like moral choices that are actually really hard, yeah. don't they? Yeah, yeah, it's really well done. I think part, part of, uh, you know, maybe it's been overhyped a bit at this point, but when I... Part of what I liked about it was when I played it, I thought it was just going to be, you know, a, your average sort of modern shooter in Dubai, kill all the brown people, that sort of thing. But it actually uh, moved in really interesting ways, almost like a horror game, into this weird sort of uh, uh, like examination of the, of the protagonist as they go down this spiral of madness and despair, which, which really cheered me up. <laughs> What I, I, I can, the the big quote I'm taking away from this is kill all the brown people. Yes. So I, I'm just just take that I, out. I can attribute that. Take that out of context. Just one hour of that. That's why Australia's full of criminals. Exactly. Yeah. Basically, oh, 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 on a loop over and over and over again. What do you call it? Jumping around because I am terrible at this and I'm an awful interviewer and such. You had mentioned at the end of your flashback LP that you want that you were not going to do fade to black. Yes. Can you please do fade to black? <laughs> 
Actually, now you've brought that up, that might be an idea for one of my uh, YouTube ones. There you go, yeah. See, YouTube's a trash heap. Feel yeah. free to just throw something on the pile. Well, the thing is, I like to do games on YouTube that I'm quite familiar with, because I, like, I grew up with them. I was playing them for years and got kind of blind to their flaws, but I never actually finished Fade to Black, because it was that bad. Wow. Because you think, too, if you at least, uh, on the basis that it was a sequel to Flashback, mm. you know, you could, you could, you think you could power through it, you know, because I find myself that, too, it's like, I, I mean, I love, I actually really liked uh, Dead to Rights, which is a game we had Let's Played yeah. uh, a while back, and I actually did play through the sequel, even though it was completely fucking awful in every way, shape, and form, just because, for some reason, I'm like, I gotta see what happens to this character, and then I'm like, wait, I didn't have to see that at all, that was the stupidest thing. But um, I do understand that attitude. I mean, I remember asking at the end of my flashback, Let's Play, has anyone played at the end of Fate of Black, do you know what happens to Conrad? Be- because uh, you, I can't like to know, you do get a sort of investment in the characters. That investment entirely evaporated when I played the new flashback, of course. <laughs> Goodbye, Conrad yeah, T. Hart. Yeah, I think we prefer a character to shut his bloody mouth. I understand. I guess that's why Gordon Freeman's so popular. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Absolutely. Or Chrono. Yeah, you can project whatever personality you want onto those guys. Maybe they use the word awesome source. Maybe they don't. Let's let's just not use that word for the remainder of this, if we could. Yeah. <laughs> just, you know. In fact, you know, let's just edit that out, actually, if we... Now, uh... <laughs> I was going to say. All right, so... So walk me through this. You wake up. Okay. You have you have you have coffee. You have your morning coffee, and you have your raisin toast. Actually, not not straight away. Oh. I'll I'll wake up. Uh, I usually wake up really early, like six a.m. Which side of the bed? Uh, well, one side faces the wall, so the the one that's not that one. Okay. Okay. All right. And uh, I'll usually put on my workout gear, put turn turn the computer on, do a bit of work. Have like maybe some muesli with yogurt. <laughs> Yo- yogurt, sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. It's fine. And then um, oh my. I do a bit of work. Then I'll do my morning exercise. Then I'll have a shower, and then I'll have my coffee and raisin toast. I see. Can I just, by the way, just yeah, that's my morning. Quick, quick aside, you you are the, you are the second most British person I've ever met. But anyway, um, so but like when you when you say you you do some work or such, like uh, does that mean? I mean, what do you do? You like could I schedule like, all right, I got to play this game to review it, so that's like an hour of my day or whatever. Yeah, I tend, and then I have to. I tend to have a pretty rigid-ish schedule. How how it tends to work is that I'll write I'll write the script for zero punctuation on like uh, Monday, Tuesday. Monday, Tuesday. Yeah, and I'll put the. I did my homework. Okay. <laughs> I'll put the images together through the rest of the week, and I'll usually do that side of things in the morning. And I'll save playing video games for the for after lunch. It's usually how I do it. I see. I just like to make sure everything I actually really desperately have to do is done as soon as possible, so I can relax. I see. So this is so. If one were to pursue this career that you've pursued, I mean, you are talking about not not to say standard nine to five, but you're talking about like a standard type of work day in which say yeah, it, wake up da 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 do this. Yeah. It's just that a lot of my work is playing video games. Right, which can, absolutely. Which I can imagine would be attractive to someone who's never tried to do it for, for work. Because <laughs> I don't have the option to stop if I'm not enjoying the game, of course. <laughs> but I guess, it, yeah, I mean, I was sort of attracted to the, the job of games journalism, but I was always uh, thought I'd uh, go more into game development. Uh, because uh, I still have an interest in solo development and stuff, and I actually know a lot of game developers in Brisbane. I know more game developers than I know game journalists. Oh, okay. I always consider myself kind of closer to them. Hey, you're friends with those guys, uh, Half Brick, aren't you? Yes. Yes, they're based in Brisbane. I know a few of those guys. Tell them I like Joy Pack Jet Ride. Or Jet Pack Joy Pack Jet Ride. Jet. I'll, tell them, I'll <laughs> tell them those exact words <laughs> that you love Joy Pack Jet Ride. And my name is Slow Beef, and this is his <laughs> YouTube channel. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. Yeah, I, I like that one as well. I mean, they're more well known for Fruit Ninja, of course. Yeah. Which is the, the big one that we're. They made the big time, and suddenly they're too good for everyone. B, does you play a lot of Fruit Ninja? I've been playing it throughout the whole podcast, actually. Oh, okay, yeah. good. No, I agree. I actually, I had an interest in game development, too. And in fact, that's why I, I pursued computer science in, in college, because I wanted to actually learn how to program the games so I could just make them yeah. and such. But, um, but then, you know what the problem is? Uh, professional game design, or game development, I should say, uh tends to be these incredible sort of crunch times where you wake up at 6 a.m. and come home at 2 a.m. This, if yeah. you come home that day. This is what I, I've heard. Yeah, so that's, I, I think, why 
uh, projects like Cave Story and um, I guess your you know your games and such, where you could say, hey, you know what? What if I just make it on my own at my own leisure time? You know, sound a lot more appealing. That's always been my attitude because uh, yeah, I I really like the idea of making games. I get a lot of ideas that really interest me, but it kind of loses something if you have to share it with someone. You know. You, I want to hoard it all for myself. I understand, and but, you know, I never, I never pitched my game idea to you. Oh yes, you were going to do that. Realized. Yeah, I have a few, but um, no. Uh, but here's the deal: it's a split screen, right? Okay. And uh, the right side are mini games of a variety, a little more, a little longer than the micro games from, say, a WarioWare, you know. But yeah. mini games, and and on the left side are dialogue options. And the idea is that people are watching you play these little mini games, and you have to pick things to say during them. Okay. And then between them, you get ad revenue, <laughs> the more people like you, and you can use that to buy better equipment. Oh. And then it just keeps going so in it, cycle, so it's, say. So it's Let's Play Tycoon. That is the title. I was looking for one. <laughs> Perfect. That's awesome. How long, how long does it take you to make a game? Well, you, personally. Well, I mean. well it depends. I mean, if I'm... There's usually, you know, that point where I'm really into the idea where well, I work on it solidly for a while, and then, I'll, then it'll just sort of, like, be in the background, and I'll work on it in dribs and drabs when I've got a spare moment. And then that, that, that period can last anything up to ten years. <laughs> and then at the end, I, then under the end, I get really excited about it again. Like, the one I'm working on at the moment, I got the idea last Christmas, when I, when I had the week off. So I worked on it solidly, make a little prototype, and, and I'm still working on it now. Because I've been just oh. much, so I slowed down pretty uh, rapidly from there. Is the title "Big Dicked Werewolves"? Why would you think that? Well, because if it weren't the title, it could be. I'm just throwing it out to freebie. I will certainly okay. bear that in mind. <laughs> Absolutely, I I would go. I would play to Big Dicked Werewolves. <laughs> Tell me you're not intrigued by, by a game with that title. <laughs> Look! Look me in this. Would it be some kind of penny arcade tie-in? Oh, no, yeah, absolutely this, not. This is, because this is this is their their thing. <laughs> I've actually, you know, it's funny. I didn't even make that connection. But you're right; they're yes. monsters. Yes. Um. <laughs> so these big dicked werewolves. Uh, do you like p- picture some kind of uh, maybe some melee combat based around the big dicks? You know, I gave you shit for that booby booby bum <laughs> thing, but now I'm laughing like an idiot over this. <laughs> Beat are you still here? Uh-oh. Apparently not. Oh, no. Oh, I'm here. Oh, oh okay. Right. I was going to say, because, I mean, big dick werewolves. I'm not crazy on oh, this. Yeah, I mean, I, un- I understand if you dropped, if you, like, uh, wanted to leave for a moment during that. <laughs> no, no, I was fantasizing, actually. <laughs> uh, well, That's great. <laughs> is it fair to say you're getting a bit tired, Slow Beef? I have, yeah, I have, I have work to do and such. We, we have hit an hour now, so, um... Do you, do you have any questions for us? I've never asked this of another podcast guest. Um, well, I guess I guess I did just want to say that uh, I've been watching your videos for quite a long time now, and uh, I've I've always enjoyed them a lot, and I was I've always been very familiar with the sounds of your voices, so it was a bit weird hearing you answer back throughout the course of this. <laughs> Look, you don't own us. <laughs> I uh, well, the the feeling is mutual. Um, Aww. I I. I did. Ex- I did expect your you to sound like this, though, honestly, because I I watched a bunch of the Escapist Expo stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's see this. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's Yahtzee. He's you can see him on the Escapist doing uh, zero punctuation. Everybody, give him a big round of applause. Listening. Thanks, everybody. Hey, you're welcome. All right. I look. I look forward to his new game, Big Dick Werewolves, 2014. Yeah. Look out for it. Find it. And and thanks for having <laughs> me on. Oh, no, thank you for being on. Thank you very much. You're quite welcome. Oh, also, just before we go, I just want everyone to know, too, the title of the the message I sent you was, oh, it was intended as, oh, just do the podcast already. Like, as a jokey sort of thing. Yes. And not, oh, just do the podcast already. Like a, Yes, a you sounded a little bit cocky. I'm so, well, you know, to, big dick werewolves do that to you. All right. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Booty bitty butt butt.